All right, welcome back. This round, we're going to have Franco Lamas against Jimmy Ballard. I think Franco is playing Roscon, and Jimmy is going to play Ambush. So let's see how this plays out. Ambush is a uh, Empoleon deck with Rosalia's. Jimmy warned us there'll be a lot of oh, flick baby. poisoning this game. Nope, you won't start. <laughs> One thing that we learned from last game is that uh, we actually messed up the first turn rules, and I uh, so I rare candied into fly, into the Brava turn one, which is not the not the legal thing to do. So we've corrected that this game. Hopefully, whoever's going first won't uh, be able to pop off like that, and we'll see what's coming up real soon. It's a nice cast form start from Franco. And Jimmy's goes first. Hello, Danny. How are you? No trainer, supporter, stadium, blah, blah, blah. All right. So my three plus powers, my two plus powers for the win is no good here. Nope. Not this time. Appears to be a... Seems like he's hitting the cast form, of course. Cubone with his first attack. Bite it reads. How can you see that? Just superhero eyes. I mean, you just gotta, you see the little squiggles at the beginning and a little, yeah, and the tiny eye line. maybe. <laughs> the transceiver for Franco here. Nope, wait, your discard first. Sorry, you Probably gonna get a hole on Mentor, just get set up initially, get a trap inch down, some other stuff that's important. So if it's not prized, uh, last week uh, Jimmy was playing Imaganium and prized all his Chikoritas. <laughs> He had zero Chikoritas and had to corner lock for quite a bit before he eventually took a took an L. Unfortunate. Un probably could not corner lock some Pokemon to the end of the game like this cast form. And Jimmy over here is making some flailing motions with his arm to distract Franco. <laughs> He's trying to pull out all the stops, wants to make sure to secure a dub this time around. And Franco, unfazed, continues to search his deck with Hole and Transceiver. Just checking what's prized here, probably. There's the mentor. I assume he's gonna go for some some trampages here. This deck, I was looking at the list, and there's a lot of a uh, patented Ross one ofs, like a like a Mew Star, a Chimchino, a Quasi EX. And there's a two zero one Septile EX line. Just like any Ross deck, certainly crazy with lots of different texts. There's, I think that was the new star that just appeared for a second. Mm -hmm. I didn't play. I, I started. This is the year I started playing. End of the year, two thousand seven. Came to this wonderful store when it was known as Tomorrow's Yesterday, and. Uh, Accidentally came into a day league was there and saw a bunch of people playing Pokemon and decided to learn to play that day. I got involved later in 2009 in December, just like that was my first city championships. Didn't start playing seriously until late 2010, early 2011. So these cards are all foreign to me. As you probably saw in the last game, I was reading all of his cards and all of my cards. I looked at the list last night, but just sitting down. Rereading everything, making sure I'm not making any mistakes. Grabs the one of Chinchino. At least I hope I'm saying that right. Chinchino. Chimico, I think. Chimico. Chinchino's the yeah, it's the, the little, colorless the rat. Yeah. Fuzzy yeah, yeah. Thing that evolves into do the wave. Yeah. Chimico. Yes. It's oh. a nice start. He's got Trap Inch, Mew Star, and Chimico. Attach it to the cast form and... He's going to draw three cards here with a delta draw. That's not so bad, actually. I was honking on the, the cast form start earlier, but drawing three, not so bad. Jimmy now using hole and transceiver. Both getting fairly good starts, what they need. I assume he's also going to go for a mentor to get his... Uh, he just piplups. Mm-hmm. Or maybe in a Rosalia, maybe. I, I, I don't know what else he could really go for. There's not a lot of Pokemon in this deck. It's pretty uh. 
pretty much Empoleon's the only thing that could really do uh, much of anything. Yeah. Probably just wants to start getting those set up, hopefully start attacking with Aqua Jet really soon, get those 4020s going, and just start rolling with damage. He did Jimmy did. forget the mentor part? He yeah. He did forget the mentor part, 110%. Or is it under the water? It could be under the water. Oh. So, is he cheating? It's yeah, turn one already, and we've got some sketchy things going on. We he's, gotta... he's, he's cheating up a storm here. Good guy, Mighty Yenna. Coming in with the clutch... Uh, coming in with the clutch catch and Dan to come over and enforce the punishment on Jimmy. I, I'm still very impressed that a Pokemon has learned to type. Very impressed by that. Yes. That's, 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 peak, that's peak Pokemon. We're curious to see when internet actually appeared in the Pokemon universe. Seems they're always just running around talking to people, not catching cards or anything like that, so it's a little strange. He was flick poisoned. As expected. So Rosalia's Pokebody won't make much of a difference in this matchup, but flick poison is just going to be the way for Jimmy to equalize, slow down the game a little bit, and... Uh, just cause Franco to pull his hairs one by one until the match is over. Dan, can you go in the, the first room on the floor? There's boxes of the burn and poison counters, the cool ones. In the first room? Just grab like uh, in the Jimmy, now seemingly confident with his plays, he uh, refuses to address Franco and instead talks to Dan about grabbing cool poison markers. He is so confident that he will win this match that he is no longer paying attention to Franco. He's just purely letting him use his attacks. Nice. Just setting up with another, doesn't look like a mentor, but also grabbing three Pokemon from his deck. That is a hole in this. It is. I have the list in front of me behind a locked phone. I believe that. Oh, that's a Lynette's Net Search. Okay. What does that do? Search your deck for up to. Up to three different Pokemon types of basic Pokemon cards, excluding baby Pokemon. Show them to your opponent, and then put them into your hand, and then shuffle your deck. Interesting. So it's sort of like a mentor, except focuses on getting different types of Pokemon, which makes a lot of sense here, because you can grab Chaos Form, Voltorb, Trap Inch, whatever you need, basically. And that one looks like... Execute, I believe. Uh, yes, I think so. Good eye. And he's going to Delta draw for five here. It appears that Jimmy is happy. Maybe he's going to play a copycat or a whole on a uh, whole on mentor here. So I was thinking he got a cut. He has a, he mm -hmm. has a copycat. One potential oh, thing. No, with here, the... He's going to draw equal to that here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a scientist. Big thing with Roselia is it gives condition and turns off powers. Correct. Jimmy high-fiving Franco. For a 13 card draw. 14 total? Yeah. If that's a, not the best way to start setting up, I don't know what is. Nowadays, people complain about uh, Professor's Research being in format, drawing 7 cards. Well, here we're drawing 13. And keeping the extra card from back, so... Certainly turning around for Jimmy here. Game's going well. He's got the Roselia going. Probably going to flick poison at the end of the turn. Continue to set up some Empoleons. And uh, it's game going smoothly for him. They both have the sickness for the thickness. As it is said. With their thick hands. Jimmy actually not going to use flick poison this turn. Probably just going to do some damage with Primp Up or Empoleon. Maybe take a knockout here. Aqua Shower. I'm telling you, I'm going to get all of these suckers into play. Just spreading some... Spreading some love out. Right exactly. Now. Penguins have no power to hate anybody. 
Mm-hmm. They, they just don't. It's also attached cessation crystal to the primp up, shutting off the opponent's poke powers and poke bodies, considering it shuts off um, all Pokemon in play when cessation crystal oh, is attached to an gone. active Pokemon. Eh, it's gone. Never mind. Forget it. Got hit with the windstorm. Yep. Franco now setting up the Flygon. Hopefully going to start its accelerating energies very soon. Begin attacking. Although, given that it's a Ross deck, I'm unsure if he's even going to start attacking now. Because you could always think, like, what are the ulterior motives in the deck? Is he going to... Is it going to be, like, the truth, where you're going to play the slow game, control with Reuniclus and Vioplume, stuff like that? Or is this just... Or am I thinking way too deep into this, and he's just going to start attacking soon? Take a knockout here, hopefully, or at least get some chip damage before Jimmy starts evolving into Empoleons. His purpose might be just to uh, time out. Just, just go for the slow, slow, and yeah. Hope you have game at time. You know, I'm, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a random mill card in Franco's deck to really bait the opponent into using Aqua Shower, these slow moves, even though there's, they're definitely powerful. Definitely just waiting for him to get to a low deck, mill something. Why not? A crystal would have been real good if it stayed in play. Mm -hmm. That Flygon would be uh, be having a hard time. Yeah. Thankfully, he had the Windstorm. Unsure how many more Cessation Crystals or uh, Windstorms are in the deck, but that's going to be a common theme of this match, where Jimmy's going to try and stick a Cessation Crystal, really stop Franco from using his uh, strong Poke Bodies, Poke Powers with Flygon, either to accelerate energy or spread damage. And uh, Jimmy's going to look to stop to that and just do some constant damage with Empoleon. Okay, and then two windstorms. I think it's three. I'll yeah, there's two. We place three windstorms. Okay, so there's two cessation crystal for Jimmy's side and three windstorms for Franco's side. So he has enough outs to them, and hopefully he just needs to draw them when they're timely. Jimmy's got one more cessation crystal, and as long as Franco has the windstorm for that on ready, then shouldn't run into any problems. Good morning. It's almost it's not noon here yet. I had to wake up early for this. Usually waking up at 1030, having a nice morning, but instead I had a nice hour, 15 minute drive. So I woke up at nine, took shower, ate some food and carted over here to, to play some exciting Pokemon matches. We thank you for coming out today. <laughs> All right, so Frank is retreating, not going to continue to use Delta Draw, and is going to mimicry the Aqua Shower and spread some damage to start the game. What did I eat? I had an egg and a piece of bacon and some leftover Sprite that was in the fridge. Not the most nutritious breakfast, but got some sugar, got some protein, enough to fuel the tank. All right, it appears he put a crystal beach into play, from what I can tell. Curstone. Curstone. So that's going to continue to put some more spread damage on. Looking on Franco's side, the Pokemon that will be affected are Chimico and the Flygon on the bench. And... Um, Both Flygons. Or the other one has a Pokebody. That's the the one I was using last round, the Sand Slammer. Jimmy with two chance by Celios, probably gonna get Napoleon here. Penguin power. Go for the penguin. So I talked about my breakfast, but what did you have for breakfast, Wayne? Some French toast. French toast, nice call. Some French toast and some orange juice. And I had to stop and get some dog treats for my neighbor. Because mm -hmm. I'm shooting off some fireworks tonight. So nice. I had to get dog treats for their dog because their dog doesn't like fireworks very much. 
give and you take, right? Yep. All right, so he's involving to Empoleon, the benched. Might just attach and use Aqua Shower again, that's what I would predict. Or going to have another Empoleon to evolve into and uh, continue to put on some damage here. Not totally sure. He's just going to continue the spread. No, but I'm going to hit that for 40. And then 10 here. Yep. And 10 there. First stone only hits powers. So he sniped the Flygon with the attack, and then Cursed Stone put some damage on the Flygon and Chimico. My guess is that he's just going to sacrifice this Primple up, get his scramble, scramble energies online, and uh, continue the game that way. It's probably the play. I don't know what he... I mean, he has a lot in his hand. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I didn't get to see his, his entire hand, but... I was looking, and I thought I saw... A scramble in there as well as some other supporters so he's really just wait, waiting it out not really in too much pressure by franco right now considering he doesn't have that strong of an attacker and uh slowly loading up this flag on level or flag on ex on the bench to eventually send it up and do 80 and 10 spread to pokemon Is he going to go for his own scientist here? And his hand's been played down a little bit. Oh, adventurer. Man, ATM rock would be so good. <laughs> yeah, it would. <laughs> Plays the adventurer. He's going to draw four by discarding a hole on Pokemon, which looks like Mew. the Mew. Yes. Franco's been having having some thick hands, but not not a lot going for it. Mm -hmm. Cast form start could be. Could help, you know, with drawing cards, but that's a, that's a strong energy right there. Not yeah. a literal strong energy, but it could uh, help any giant stump comes into play. Yeah, one thing with the cast form start is that it also just reduces the number of cast forms he has available. Because it's just one less that's already stuck into play. And so now he replaces the cursed stone with giant stump. Gonna basically... Uh, Clear itself off, similar to Parallel City. Both players can't have more than three bench Pokemon, so it's like a Parallel City for both sides. It's going to clear off the Cast Form and the Chimago to prevent some of Jimmy's potential prizes there from the spread damage and uh, just continue to attack with this Mew Star. That would have actually been a good idea there. The Flick Poison. That is one idea. Instead, it looks like he... Or that's actually what he just did. He uh, flick poisoned the Empoleon, bringing that up. So now the Empoleon's kind of kind of trapped up there, doesn't have an energy to attack with Aqua Jet. And Jimmy's going to need like a warp point or something like that to bring Primplet back to the active. Weird, Seems we're having some uh, some controversy in the chat over the word flick. Yes, and the quote f word that Dax PTCG is talking about here, and Nightbot diffusing the conversation with the shop top cut central here. Yes, we have singles and we have other things right, as well. And Dan once again saves the day, hopefully. And uh, Jimmy over here is gonna. I believe you've all been to the attack. Marowak. 
as well. Mm -hmm. Except 10, right? Yep. Oh. That card isn't bad at all. So now Marowak is going to be putting some... When it gets charged up with like a scramble energy, it's going to be putting some more spread damage around the board. So with the scramble with three energies attached to it, it can snipe 60 across three different Pokemon. Which would be very powerful. Pass. Okay. Jimmy go. just passes. No, yep. This match is a lot less exciting than the last one for now, but I imagine the once prizes start being taken, it'll start to speed up. But this is really just Franco putting some beginning damage on before Jimmy's scrambles come online, and Jimmy just trying to load up his Empoleons, get ready for a, a war between Empoleon and Flygon soon. Evolving into Executor, who was featured last week, if you saw. Jimmy is serenading us with some Ozzy Osbourne as well. Franco getting that, making use of that double attach with Flygon's Delta Supply, attaching an extra basic energy per turn to a whole on Pokemon, using that to attach a lightning to this Flygon. And uh, maybe we'll think about swinging it with that in the future. Considering that it is actually grass and metal, if I read it right, Empoleon's weak to metal. Or it might be lightning, one of the two. It's lightning. And so we'll be able to uh, do some damage with Swift oh, for 60. Uh, here comes the Flygon. All right, so that's going to put Empoleon onto a return KO timer, setting it at 120 HP while it's poisoned and spreading 10 to all the bench basic Pokemon with, or all the bench Pokemon with damage on it. And then the Piplup and the Roselia are going to take spread damage from sand damage in between turns. Franco actually showing that he is a stronger spread deck than Jimmy's Ambush. There's a scramble energy. Mm -hmm. So now Jimmy's really going to need a way to get this Empoleon out of the active or cure this poison to... Prevent it from being knocked out back into Franco's turn, allowing him to use Psychic Pulse on a fresh Pokemon. And so he didn't have the Warp Point last turn, so he's going to have to try and draw into it this turn, or maybe just Hard Retreat somehow, but either way, you're not totally happy with how it's playing out. Looking through his hand, he could got he's got some stuff he could he could draw with. He's got a copycat in there. He's got. If he's gonna try to dig for it, or is he gonna attach? It's attached. Maybe he's just gonna have to let this go down. Send up the Roselia to to be knocked out from Psychic Pulse. Just all depends on how much he wants to commit here. Well, you can bet. He can manually retreat it, though. I think its retreat cost is two. Yeah. He could retreat to the Roselia, keep it at 120 damage, but the problem here is that even if you retreat the Empoleon, it's still going to get knocked out from Psychic Pulse because it does 10 damage to the bench Pokemon already damage. And so that'll even though Empoleon's not going to be poisoned from the active anymore, if he sent up the Roselia to be knocked out, the Empoleon will just be knocked out on the bench from the from that extra 10 damage. Jimmy using the Celio's network. Um, how many cards are you now? I'll tell you in a second. Yeah. Grabbing the primple up. Now most of everything, I mean, he, if Franco attaches to the Mew again, everything will have energy on it to where that Marowak could come in and uh, continue the spread. He wouldn't even need another Empoleon. Franco and Jimmy had a tiny, uh, tiny little duet there. 
now resuming play on the game. They're currently jamming out to some better music than we are with our, our dead silence. What what All is right. the music this week? I think it was I was listening to. Uh, oh, so it's going to be some some Guns and Roses. And, yeah. And Typical some, rock, some of the classics. So Jimmy chose to just attack with the uh, Ice Blade, did forty damage to looks like the active flag on the X, letting it be knocked out in between turns for poison, and now setting up the Roselia for uh, death fodder with the Psychic Pulse. Dan coming in once again to save the day. I assume some kisses playing. Right, Rosalia is just gonna be the sacrifice. Yeah. One other thing I could see him potentially doing. Oh, never mind. It's Rico soon. What I was thinking, because he could maybe try to flick poison, bring up the executor or Mew or something like that. Maybe even the Flygon to just cause a little bit more of a fight, but no. It's good to attach to another bench Pokemon. Just get those Empoleons ready for, for battle soon. And so here it should Jimmy's now turn. Should be able to take a knockout here on the Flygon with a Scramble Energy and Empoleon. So I expect him to start making a little bit of a return now. There's the there's the penguin. He does have the scramble in hand. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so he grabs the grabs the Empoleon off while he's training, evolves into Empoleon from that from that supporter, and now attaches a scramble energy, and then will be able to knock him out with Aqua Jet. Jim's deciding where to put the 20. Game is now tied. The one advantage Jimmy has over Franco is that he's trading two for one prize. Yeah. There's no EXs in uh in the Sympolion deck. This was straight out of Diamond and Pearl base set. Uh, okay. when the level X mechanic which you saw in the uh, Infernape deck was brought in yeah and so with that with the lack of EX Pokemon there's really no uh, there's no way for Jimmy to like get crushed out of the game here all his Pokemon are giving up one prize and so like the Infernape, or Infernape deck it aims to trade two for ones with more efficient attackers and Napoleon here it's going to make good use of that with Ice Blade and Aqua Jet, as well as the other pesky tools like Roselli in the deck. And so now that Jimmy and Franco are tied on prize cards, Scramble Energy shuts off. And so now Franco has sort of a choice here where he can choose to stay on this even prize game now, like making use of the lack of Scramble Energy, or maybe he wants to like take a knockout on the bench Pokemon, something like that if possible, and just deal some extra damage before uh, Scramble comes back online. No. I I would assume now I'm thinking in the mind of Ross, Ross would want to be would not want to get the first prize for the exact play that Yeah, so Franco now is making good use of the the shut off on Scramble Energy using Spit Bomb to do thirty damage to Primp Up and a Marowak. So now if everything goes right for Franco here, he'll be able to knock out both the split bomb again. And so, I would say for the Scramble Energy comment made by Yusuke, it's important to not wait too long. So he could have just kept doing nothing, but at some point you need to establish a threat because the Empoleons can begin attacking, attacking without Scramble Energy. And also one thing that they can do is they can just spread damage across your entire board. So if you don't take knockouts, you just let Empoleons spread the damage. And then you need, you need to start taking prizes eventually. So 
it basically corners you into taking prizes, but you want to make sure you aren't doing it um, too prematurely, but also waiting long enough. You want to have a developed enough board to be able to retaliate when they attack with scramble energy, but you also don't want to wait too long because then they don't need scramble energy to start attacking. Yeah, correct, my Diana. I totally might be just spacing out, but wasn't there another flag on on Franco's bench? Uh... Yes. Dan, do you know where the flag I went? Yeah. Oh, never mind. We got oh. an answer. Yeah, Mr. Briny. He used Briny. I didn't know that's what Briny did. I apologize. Yeah, I noticed the trap inch. I saw the Brinies in the discard, but considering... I would be a little curious why he would pick it up, but considering there was heavily damage, it makes some sense now. I assume that's that's why he picked it up. Yeah. Uh, my guess on why he's hitting the Marowak is because he might realize that Marowak's eventually going to be a problem if he ever gets to, uh, down to uh, Scramble Energy, especially in picking off the Mew Star. And so I think Franco realizes that the Sympolion in the active spot is kind of useless right now, and he might be able to hit it with Split Bomb next turn or something like that anyhow. Jimmy's in a tough spot. I mean, he can. Wow, so he actually copycatted and didn't get us. Oh, he has one water energy, but it looked like he had just the rest of his hand was full of scrambles. So it's good that he got the water so we can at least start attacking with um, Ice Blade here with the active Empoleon, because otherwise he would just be dead in the water just waiting for Franco to, to do things. This game is located in uh, Top Cut Comics in Loves Park, Illinois. There's so, a war point. Yeah. Jimmy gets the war point here. Franco's forced to either send up the trap inch, which he needs to evolve back into Flygon, or send up the Mew Star. But the important thing here is it allows Jimmy to send up the Empoleon with water energies. So once Franco takes a knockout on this Empoleon, he can then continue attacking with the Empoleon with the scramble on the bench. So he's making good use of his energies, using the ones that have the water energies while scramble energy is offline, and then proceeding to use the one with scramble when given the opportunity next turn if the Empoleon gets knocked out. And yeah, Mighty Anna has a good point here, that the Rayquaza EX is going to be very good later on, especially because of its typing, because it's lightning type, and we'll be able to deal some really good damage to Empoleon later on, once that comes into play. May not even need to come into play. Mm -hmm. I, I, if uh, Franco can take two more knockouts on on the Marowak and and Empoleon, I don't I don't really see much mm -hmm. the need he, for the Rayquaza. Yeah, he might just be able to pressure Jimmy out of the game here, but this trampage is on a timer, so this Mr. Brian's compassion, although it was good in healing the Flygon, if you're not able to get the Flygon back into play, it's kind of a kind of a tough one in how you're gonna solve that problem. Because now you've removed the the opportunity to use Flygon's ability while it was still alive and even reduce the amount of HP it took to knock out that Pokemon. So I think Flygon, when it was picked up, maybe had 80 HP left, but now the Trap Inch only has 50 total, so Jimmy only has to do 50 to like effectively remove the Flygon from play rather than the 80 damage it would have needed considering um, if he kept Flygon in play. Thank you for the advice, Diff. I, I'm trying not to yell into the mic. Uh, like, like make it sound like I'm yelling at the mic, but I moved, I moved it closer. All right, so here Franco's going to use the hole on Farmer, recycle some much-needed cards back into his deck. Looking at the Chimico, Grass Energy, Flygon Level X, and Hole on Cast Form. So, Flygon EX. Flygon EX. Yes, yes. Flygon Level X, iconic. I love that card. But uh, we we gotta wait till. 2008, 2009 yeah. Yeah. to play that card. If uh, We're going to have a pull-up on Tuesday in Snowpoint Temple or in Burbank for next week's uh, 
year. And uh, once again, I'm going to be campaigning for 2008 or 2009. Dan has given me the number three. Don't listen to Dan. Dan would like 2003. Dwayne wants 2009, 2008. So there's a lot of different uh, opinions here. That's why we're not the ones voting. That's why you guys are the ones voting. You guys are the one watching. Oh, we absolutely get to vote. We get to vote too, but our vote means as much as theirs. Dan, we will not um, we will not support your subtle efforts to sway the viewers in the chat here. I personally will take out my phone and type 2011 post rotation to to bring some action to the I, format that I'd we want. I'd be cool with I'd be cool with that. I'd be cool with that. I could play I could play Kingdra Prime. All right, the deed is done. <laughs> we must uh, we must have some fairness here. There will be no swaying of the viewers unless it is in my direction. I only admit to, to bias being a good thing if it benefits me. <laughs> so one comment on the flag on level X is um, recently I know a lot of my friends have been looking at Tabletop Simulator and replicating uh, either Pokemon decks or drafts or Pokemon cubes in there. So one thing I've done a lot recently is um, played Michael Slutsky's cube in Tabletop Simulator with him and Omar, who are pretty disconnected from the... Omar, at least, is pretty disconnected from the game, but it's a lot of fun to just cube two to three times a day, spend six hours doing that. So Flygon Level X is one of the cards in his cube. I really enjoy it, right. and uh, that's why it was on my mind. Dan's just flexing. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. I wait for the day when uh, everyone we're drafting with has played once because we've ref, we've cubed maybe eight times now. And so there's always a new person every single time. So we have to re-explain all the commands, like rotating the cards, flipping them, grouping them, all that jazz, like just every time. Yeah. He, Jimmy also said he made deck out. Uh -huh. So there's a chance that, that I don't know if that was the intention of this deck for Ross. I doubt it. Ross, if you're watching... Please say something and tell us if that was the intention of this deck. But, yeah. Uh, Looking over, Franco's deck deck is about two and a half times thicker than Jimmy's. Um, my Jimmy guess is Jimmy's got... Jimmy did take a knockout, though. Double yeah. knockout. My guess is Jimmy has about 10, 15 cards left, maybe. But as Dwayne said, he took a knockout down to two prizes, and Franco is just left with this, with this executor, so... Honestly, not too sure how Franco's going to combat these two Empoleons, especially if Jimmy can uh, get another Water Energy and attach that to his Bench Empoleon and continue attacking. I remember when uh, Franco won a League Cup with... His nine? And nine cards. Jimmy has nine cards. Of it. Franco won a League Cup, I think, with Empoleon. And uh, I got real hyped about it. Pengu I love penguins. I love penguins. Penguins are my favorite animal. Anything with penguins, I'm cool with. Um, and now uh, the man who won with penguins looks like he may be losing against uh, a bunch of penguins. What is your favorite penguin? Oh, rock hopper penguin. Cool. Rock hopper penguins. The penguins. It's small. It's got those green, like not green, yellow things on it. Yeah. They 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 mate for life. They carry rocks around and stuff. The ones you see all the the Pinterest posts about. Yes. Well, more than one penguin species. Yeah. Species does the does the rock thing, but uh, they have permanent suits just on them. Like, I can't hate on them. Mm -hmm. They can't. They're they're flightless birds, so they're so like they're like defenseless. But you get them in water, they're like rocket ships. Yeah. Me, I'm biased. I'm kind of a squirrel guy. Uh, living on college campuses really. Uh, has me surrounded by the squirrel and chipmunk environment. I pass by the Union and I see uh, at least 15 squirrels in this little uh, this little pause in between the math building and the Union. So, Are the geese territorial? I've actually seen very terrorist. few geese back in down in Urbana. Considering the lack of water, maybe that's why. But the squirrels are definitely out in full force during the year. When I was out in Chicago, we had, we had a pigeon problem. 
mm-hmm. kids. Yeah, everywhere. everywhere. Everywhere they would. They, they didn't. They didn't. But people didn't get scared by people. They they'd come up and try to take your food and stuff. It was. Yeah, it's like the the city animals are, are definitely, the most ruthless ones. Like I hear I hear jokes about New York City rats being way more vicious than any other rat in the world, and uh, I guess I'll have to live live in New York to to understand that. All right, so looking back at the game, he hole and mentored for Trappens, Trimaco, and looks like Tricos. Tricos. Asking if he can't get Ray Yes, Hole and Mentor can only grab Pokemon with less than 100, 100 HP or less, and so the Rayquaza, I think, has more than that, either 110 or 120. And so that's probably why the deck runs the last search card, so you're able to grab Rayquaza from the deck, because it's contingent on different typed Pokemon rather than low HP. 10 HP. Yeah. So close yet so far. That would have put in a, quite the work if it was able to grab it. Mm-hmm. Another thing that's important for Jimmy here is his he's got the cessation crystal down on the Empoleon, so um, now it's gone, but that could have posed a problem in the future. Curse Stone still in play, putting some chip damage on the time ago. All he needs is an energy. I think he wins because it's got 80 HP and... Yeah, oh, it has 10 damage. He just needs... Uh, yeah, you can 70. just attack it. No, but it's not an EX. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would have gotten... Um, the other so he can knock out the Executor, which is probably the the correct play here. Uh, Jimmy, another still Celios. very few cards in deck. Down to 8 now. Yeah, grab another. Oh, grab a Piplup. But from, yeah, the, from his line of play, it seems like he's got another Empoleon ready to go with, like, Rare Candy Empoleon, but... The big question is, does he have enough energy to empower it on And he says yes. Pro- maybe he's just going to go for a double Ice Blade, Blade here. Okay. Oh, Ice Blade actually knocks out a Trico. Well, I know for a fact I need to get lucky with... Uh, All Jimmy needs next turn is turn energy this for game. Mm-hmm. Which is safe actually, to assume he has. No, No, because it seems like... Franco yeah, has dual I threats here, like he can... Yep. Yeah, and so it seems to be over with Jimmy able to take up a prize on the Chimico or the Trico, whatever Franco does. He can't prevent both threats. Either the Empoleon stays alive and he ice blades the Trico, or uh, it gets knocked out and then he uses Primplup's attack to do enough to the Chimico. And now's the moment where you're just, you're staring the loss in the face. You're trying to think of a way out. There isn't a way out, and you uh, time passes by extremely slowly. Where you know your opponent has game, or likely has game, and uh, there's not much you can do. Like Mighty Anna says, he can stump it away, but considering that he would need to get two more Pokemon from his deck, uh, he got one with the Rayquaza, but not totally sure if he'll be able to do it. The problem is he would need two more. I guess looking at his hand, he has an Absol EX and a cast for him. But it seems a little troubling here. I think his only out, Franco's only out, is to get the play you're talking about where you stump away a Chimeco and the Trico and uh, then take a knockout with like Rayquaza Star here. But I imagine that you're still going to get two turned with the. You're probably still going to get two turned by the Bench Piplup once it evolves into a Primplup or Empoleon. So he goes for the play that you're talking about, at least benching the cast for him. Does not have a lightning energy in hand to uh, attack with Rayquaza here, unfortunately. So it appears that the game will just end over two turns here. He's just going to retreat out. Oh, he gets it back with the... Okay. I see. Just of the way the Chimeco and... Yeah, this this Rayquaza doesn't even knock out the Empoleon here, though. It's just going to do 60 damage to the active Empoleon here. Oh, no, I haven't. 
so I guess he can knock out this employee in over two turns, but the pip up on the bench once he goes grows big and strong into a mighty emperor penguin will cause some problems for for Franco here. A metal emperor penguin. Yes. One of the one of the better typings to exist was a uh, Napoleon with his water metal typing. And so Franco's going to get two turn here. The primp up can knock out the, the cast form next turn. Nothing Franco can do about it. Can't evolve, can't brinies, can't heal, can't do anything. And so Jimmy's trying to get him to accept defeat. Yeah. And he accepted defeat. And so the game is over. Jimmy wins this game with Empoleon versus uh, Ross gone. Whew. Was looking a little rough in the beginning with uh, Jimmy's pretty slow start. The Empoleon getting knocked out by Poison back into Franco's turn was a little... A little sketchy, but he was able to yeah, uh, trade two for one, deal a good amount so of damage to Flygon, clear out Franco's attackers, and uh, prevent him from finishing out the game. Well played, though, sir. Yeah, yeah. That well sneaky played. Rain. Well, it was a good yeah, game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of slow paced at times, but you were right. Once knockout started to pick up, it kind of yeah started getting more entertaining. And so, not totally sure who's playing next round, who's going to commentate what decks are playing, but we'll all have that very soon. And uh, since the game closed up, we're going to take a short break before while we get settled for the next round. And uh, we'll see you guys back here in a couple of minutes. See you.